Why are all asset prices really racing? Yeah, it, all asset prices except, uh, I guess gold's a commodity, not, I mean, sorry, um, oil is a commodity, not necessarily now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I I read an article, I should have saved it and, and brought it, but it was an article on, on uh, it was like Bell Media or something, one of the one oh. of the big Canadian ones, and they went, you know, a whole, you know, thousand words or whatever on what their thoughts on gold prices are. And you know what the one thing that they didn't talk about once <laughs> they didn't talk well, about one time about what that? gold prices are so high. It's yeah. like they didn't talk about that the U.S. government is $35 trillion in debt. So they tried 30, to explain the yeah. price of gold without mentioning the fact that the U.S. government is $35 trillion in debt. Yeah. And I was just, you know, I was just reading it. It was just like nonsense, like n nonsense, like utter, <laughs> utter nonsense. Like that is the reason why gold prices are rocketing. Right. 35 trillion. And these are the people that give you a credit score. All right. Okay. $35 trillion <laughs> in debt, right? Like the, the Western nations of the world are, you know, almost comically in debt at this point, And people just do not have the confidence in the money. And so that's why gold prices are going higher. And, you know, I've been screaming this from, from the top of buildings from, you know, from 2022, it just became painfully obvious to me. I did not own a single ounce of gold before 2022 uh, because it's, you know, wasn't the fastest horse in the race. In my view, it was like I could bet, get better risk rated return somewhere else. But as soon as 2022 happened, COVID ended, but the spending didn't end. It became increasingly clear to me. It's like, I better get a bunch of gold and Bitcoin. Like this is going to happen. Like whether mm -hmm. I, whether I think it's, you know, whether, you know, investing in a shiny metal rock, you know, yeah. became a good idea. It's like, it only became a good idea because that became such a bad idea. Right. Yeah. Wow. That is, that's incredible. So the national debt's going crazy. Um, yeah, that I don't, how can they do that? How, how, how are they continuing to do this? I, I mean, how, how is everything still staying together with that much, um, you know, debt in the U S market? It's, it's, it's a brand, right? It's like, why can Hermes sell a little decorative bracelet for a thousand bucks that cost them $5 to make? You know what I mean? When you walk down the road to Ardennes and they sell it for $10 or something, right? It's like, it, it's, it's a brand and that's going to be around uh, for a while. It's like, it's valuable because people still say it's valuable, right? Even though it's like, you know, it's no different than the, at its essence, it's no different than the, than the Zimbabwe, uh, $20 billion bill. Right. I mean, they got a bunch of gold at Fort Knox, but not nearly enough to back 35 trillion. Yeah. Right. Like it's, it's not close. So, you know, that's what's happening. And it's like, I, I, we saw this because people, you know, they, they saw interest rates go up. And I told everyone, I was like, the prime rate of interest in Canada has been four and a quarter to four and a half for decades. Like that's been the average prime rate in Canada, right? And, but people look for the, the big peaks and the big mm -hmm. lows. And I'm like, you're, you're thinking about buying a property. You're thinking about doing something. It's like, it, it should make sense at that, right? You, you should look at that average rate of, you know, that average interest rate, because that's kind of where it's going. But just like rough math, you start looking at $35 trillion. Even if you roll 35 trillion, you know, over at 5%, okay, just rolling that over, it's like the interest expense that the U.S. is going to have is going to be, you know, 1.7 trillion. Yeah, like so, just, just yeah, rolling over the existing rates, right? So not going to be able to afford the the tax debt. Bill, yeah. Like right? that, that would drive the deficit from 2 trillion to, you know, you know that's going to drive the deficit from 2 trillion to 2.7 trillion with no other increase in expenditures, you know, at all. Right. And so, you know, people were at the height of it when interest rates are going up and they're telling me, it's like, Oh, remember the eighties, it's going to go to 20 some percent. I was like, there was one third the debt levels in the yeah. 80s. So roughly speaking, 7% interest was just as painful as, you know, with three times as more debt, 7% was just as painful as 21% in the 80s. Like, yeah. that was the stress on the economy that that was going to happen, right? At 20%, it's like, you know, we're talking financial Armageddon, like the credit markets as we know it would seize up. Like, it's just, who, yeah. who is going to buy the treasury, you know, who is going to buy the treasury bonds is like, you're seeing less and less people are, um, it's not like a cliff where 
people are selling off U.S. Treasury bonds across the world, it's like they're slowly getting out of them. They're getting out of them, and they're getting into gold, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, on the margin, some are getting into Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's the same time I started buying Bitcoin was in 2022. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually a pretty conservative investor, right? And so for me to take a big allocation into gold or Bitcoin, it's like I had really good reason to do so. And like, here we are. It's like, it, but it was not kind of an easy trade. It's not because I, you know, really believe in gold. It's interesting, right? But it's, 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 it's a, you know, it's a fixed asset as opposed to money that could just roll off the printer. It's like, you got to actually get in the ground, you got to mine it, you got to refine it and you got to produce it. It's like, you can't really fake the, the physical gold, but in terms of uh, treasury bonds, money printing, hundred percent, you can do that. Right. And so when you have that, it's like, I, I see a lot of people, they have to understand that uh, where are Canadian mortgage interest rates going? It's like, well, I, I mean, the safe bet, the probable bet, and there's always like, no one can predict the future, right? But the probable bet is it's going back to the historic averages. And anyone who doesn't view that as their base case, it's like, oh, it's definitely going to crash to zero. It's definitely going to go back up or definitely stay there. It's like, why? Based on what evidence? There has to be a really compelling argument to tell me that it's not going to mean revert back to, you know, the the prime rate of interest being, you know, four and a quarter, four and a half. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, you're looking at a, uh, um, bank of Canada rate of two, two and a quarter, two and a half, maybe like that, that's it. Right. Um, that's where directionally we're going, but, but it's like, are there risks that it could stay higher for longer? It's like, yeah, probably stayed a little higher for a little longer than most people thought. Right. Could it go back up? I mean, it's possible. Is it likely? No. You know, the likely is it's going to mean revert. But what's more probable? Is it more probable that the interest rates are going to go up from here? Or is it more probable that interest rates are actually going to go back down below the baseline? And I tell people, it's like, look at what we're dealing with here. It's like, who is indebted the most? It's the governments around the world, okay? the governments around the world and who controls the rate of interest, the governments around the world. That's right. So um, maybe explain to people the, um, the separation between the, the governments and the Fed, because the Fed is not federal and it's not a government agency. <laughs> it's not, it's right? not federal and there are no reserves. <laughs> not federal and there are no reserves. So maybe yeah. describe that a little bit because you know, we have the, the massive interest on the debt, uh, it, the Canadian government, same way, um, and, and the, uh, the Fed in, in the U.S. So maybe yeah. explain that a little bit so that we get a better understanding of, of who exactly, you know, we're indebted to. So if the, if the interest rates go up and they can't afford to service that debt, what happens at that point? Well, I mean, they have to, they, uh, they, they will be able to afford it because they can print the money. As long as the, as long as the interest obligations are in their own currency, they'll be fine. Right. It's, you know, when do you get the currency crisis, like the, the Southeast Asian currency crisis in the, in the nineties, it's because they have debt that's not in their own currency. Right. And so their own currency starts to get devalued, but they still have to make the interest and debt payments in someone else's currency, i.e. U.S. dollars, then you have a problem, right? So the, would the U.S. ever default? Um, no, not on, a, not on a nominal basis. On a real basis, though, they're going to print their way out of it. Like, they're going to print their way out of it because what has to happen here is they have an economy of $28 trillion in size. They have to raise enough tax revenue, okay? Um, and you can come up with all kinds of crazy, you know, tax policies, people will say tax the billionaires. It's like, oh, okay, tax the billionaires. I think people have like added it up. Like the, if you, if you confiscate it, forget about taxing the billionaires, just confiscate all their wealth. The billion, the, the U S government could operate for like 18 months. Like it's like, <laughs> then what, <laughs> then what's your plan, right? Then what? <laughs> it's like, you have to, you can only have any sort of reasonable taxation off the uh, GDP, uh, off your GDP. 
And so what they're going to do is they're going to print a bunch of money. Okay. And then it's going to be easier if this is say $40 trillion, it's going to be easier to raise enough tax revenue off of this to close this gap here. Okay. And I mean, what, the, what does that mean? All of the asset holders are going to get richer. So all the people who are currently rich are going to get richer and all the people who are poor are going to get poorer. Um, completely unelectable position, but a mathematical certainty to happen because there are no other options at this point. Like mm. there just are no other options. Like all of the, you know, you just see the stupidity of like the, the Jagmeet Singhs of the world saying, we're going to come after the, you know, the, the Canadian grocers of like what for their single digit profit margins. Like, like just like just step back and like start calculating the math of the, of what people are asking for. It's like they're, they're completely broke. And they're either too stupid or they don't want to admit it because if they admit it, it basically, you know, tells people a very bleak outcome and you have to get assets. Like you yes. have to get assets Yes. and borrowing in these fake paper dollars responsibly, borrowing responsibly in the fake paper dollars is going to help you get, a, you know, get ahead of it. Right. Um, and you know, how do I believe this is like, I mean, people who might know myself, like I had millions of dollars of, uh, million, me personally, millions of dollars of variable rate interest de debt going into the debt increases. And a lot of people, they, you know, they're going to say, Oh, why didn't you lock in? It's like, I'm dealing with commercial financing and there's a lot of different restrictions on that. So most people who, you know, they've only ever financed their, their $500,000 house or a million dollar house. I'm, like, I'm, I'm dealing with different, different instruments and different properties and different businesses. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but did I care? No, I didn't care because, you know, all my ratios were fine. My liquidity is fine. You know, I have multiple streams of income. It's like, it doesn't really uh, matter to me. It's like, I know it's going to mean revert, right? It's, a, it's just that ultimate confidence. It's just like, I know it's going to mean revert because if it didn't, financial Armageddon would hit and financial Armageddon would hit long before I'm struggling to make my payments. Exactly. And it's not just, you know, people like yourself. Um, it would hit all of all of the people who have that massive debt. So like you talked about before, there are companies out there like, you know, the, the largest companies in Canada and the world, they hold a certain amount of debt. Yes. And if they can't service their debt, then we have a, a commercial, um, you know, lending crisis. We'd have a commercial property crisis. We'd have, you know, uh, like you said, financial Armageddon because it wouldn't be able to service it. And also the government of, of Canada and the U S would, would run into troubles. I mean, they could just print their way out, but, at the same time, that devalues our currency. So it just makes the uh, asset prices go up and makes everything more expensive. Yeah. So, I mean, where are Canadian interest rates going down? They're going down. And like that, that's the, the likely scenario. And the, the risks of like, is it going down to the average and the mean is like the risks are actually to the downside, not to the upside. Right. Was, you know, the, you look at what the probabilities are. It's like, if you just look at life as kind of a bell curve, it's like the most probable, you know, solution is they're going to, uh, they're going back to the mean revert. Okay. We're going to get prime rates back to four and a quarter, four and a half. Right. But you know, between the two options, which one's more probable to stay at five or six or go down to uh, two or three, going down to two or three is actually more probable than staying at four because the governments around the world who you know, effectively influence the interest rates are the most indebted entities of all. 